Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So today we are gonna see, what if Naruto and Hinata lost their memories, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description. So let's begin the story. There was an unusual commotion in the forests on the western edge of the land of rivers, close to the border they shared with the land of wind. The commotion was unusual because normally shinobi didn't operate in that sparsely populated land. Tonight was different. The four-man squad had a mission, which was in the finishing stages. Did you find the leader, Tetsuya the squad leader, one of the top jonin of Suna named Baki, called out. I did, and took care of him. Looks like these slavers have raided other towns than just the ones we were informed about in Wind and Rivers. Baki looked at where the other two members of his squad, a woman named Koken and a man named Ichiro, were dividing up the young ones the late slaves had taken. Koken was going to return the Wind children to their homes, while Ichiro had responsibility over the ones who came from Rivers. All were between the ages of 8 and 12, and appeared to have been treated decently. Baki turned back to his young subordinate. Tetsuya was the youngest member of the squad, having made Chunin last year. What do you mean? Did you find more than were reported missing? Come here and I'll show you. Baki followed Tetsuya past the bodies of the slain slavers and showed him another line of children. There were six of them and they were much younger than the others and all looked to be between the ages of 3 and 5. Two, a boy and girl, appeared to be related. They both had pale skin and delicate facial features, though the boy had dark brown hair and the girl had blue-black hair. There was one other girl, she had brown hair that reached past her shoulders and tan skin. The other three were boys. One had black hair and the biggest eyebrows Baki had ever seen on a child that young. One boy definitely stood out, with wild, spiky, bright blonde hair and three whisker-like birthmarks, or were they scars? On each cheek. The last child had black hair that was pulled back into a top knot. All appeared to be sleeping. I've tried to wake them up, but my guess is that they are drugged Tetsuya said. He pointed to the tags on each child's back, currently the only clue to their identities. The relatives had the word Zell to Kumagaka written on theirs. The blonde boy and the boy with the topknot were tagged Zell to Awagaka, and the brown-haired girl and bushy-eyebrowed boy were labeled Highest Bitter. I guess this means we can safely assume they aren't from Iwer Kumobaki murmured, they could be from grass, rain, fire, or anywhere. Hopefully one of them can tell us their homeland and village. Let us hope that they are old enough to remember where their homes are and who their families are. Sometimes children this young don't Tetsuya said. I pray that the slavers didn't kill their families when they stole them, like they did with some of the families of the other children. Aki nodded in agreement and they began to gather up the sleeping children. The little girl with blue-black hair was the hardest to pick up. Her brown-haired relative, was he her brother? Wouldn't release her fine, though dirty pink kimono, even in his sleep, and she was attached to the shirt of the blonde boy. Baki ended up having to pick all three of them up so they could move them over to the main portion of the campsite. Once the six children had been transferred, they explained what they had found to the other members of the team. One of the other captives, a girl almost 11, spoke up. They made them sleep because they wouldn't stop crying. We don't know their names or where they are from. They were brought to the slavers about five days ago. Ichiro, the poison specialist, gave the small ones an antidote to help them overcome the effects of the sleeping potion. The brown-haired boy was the first to wake up. He ended up giving them quite a start when he opened his eyes. They were a pale bluish purple, almost white, with no pupil. He turned to the little girl he had held on to. Imauto-chan, are you okay? Wake up. Your sister is still asleep Koken gently told the small boy, trying to help calm him. Don't worry, she'll wake up soon. We are shinobi from Sunagakur and have rescued you from the slavers that have held you, your sister, and your friends. Where are you from? The boy scrunched his forehead, obviously thinking hard. I don't know. Aki sighed and asked, what is your name? Now the child looks scared, I don't know. I don't remember. All I know is that I need to protect my Amato-chan. Where is the red-eyed man? Red-eyed man? He grabbed her and me, saying we needed to go. That's all I know the boy began to cry, obviously upset by their questions. The boy doesn't remember his own name? This is not natural. What about the others? If they don't remember either, we may have to take them back to Suna with us Baki thought. Our orders were to eliminate the slavers and return the children to their home villages. But these children don't know where they come from, and the other children don't know either. They'll have to return with us to Suna. Hopefully, time is all they need to remember, or the Kazakiage has heard more about other missing children. One after another, the other children woke up. Like the first, none of them had any memory of who they were or where they came from. Curiously, only the brown-haired boy seemed to have knowledge of a red-eyed man. After the final child awoke, the boy with the bushy eyebrows, Baki, had come to the conclusion that these children had probably had their memories erased by means of a powerful one. Only back in Suna do we have the expertise needed to break it, but can we break them without destroying their minds? 
little ones Baki said, we want to take you to our home Sunagakur no Sado. Hopefully when we arrive, we can discover the information we need to return you to your families. The blonde boy, who had startling blue eyes, looked at him. Do you promise the little girl with blue black hair and the same disturbingly pale eyes as her brother, was clutching his hand. I promise. If we can't find them, we will find you families in Suna. Please don't separate us the pale-eyed girl whispered, holding her friends and brother's hands. We won't Tatsaya assured the six kids. Aki turned to Koken and Ichiro, you know what to do with your charges. Once they are all safely home, return to Suna. Tatsaya and I will take these small ones to Suna and report to the Kazakiage. Hopefully he may have heard something about these little ones. And I have some water, please the brown-haired girl, with matching brown eyes asked Baki, tugging on his trouser leg. Sure. Tutsaya, give them some water and food Baki called out. We'll head back to Suna when the sun rises. The trip back took a while, mainly because of the pace of the little ones. They were so small and all needed naps during the day. Baki and Tutsaya ended up making Suna bushings to carry the children to the village. Two days later, they finally arrived at the village walls. Baki, Tutsaya Kameko, one of the guards, greeted them, I see you have picked up some strays. These children have no idea where they are from or what their names are. They were taken separately from the others we were hired to rescue Baki explained the presence of the children. We were hoping the Kazakiage would have heard some information about them while we were away. She nodded in understanding, looking at the six children. My heavens, they are so young. No wonder why they don't remember their home. They are so cute at that age. Baki led the way to the Kazakiage's office building, the six children following him like ducklings following their mother. Tutsaya brought up the rear, making sure that none strayed. It didn't take long for them to be admitted to see the Yandane Kazakiage. Sabakumasa had been granted the title during the Third Shinobi War, after the disappearance of the Sandane Kazakiage. When his youngest son, Gara, was born, the village elders forced him to seal the Ichibi no Shukaku into the child to create Suna's third Jinchuriki. Masa's beloved wife, Kurura, had been seriously ill when she gave birth, and as a result of her illness, had volunteered to become the necessary sacrifice, so their three children wouldn't be orphaned. The bad part was that Chio, a highly respected elder, wasn't skilled enough to correctly make Gara's seal. Little Gara was unable to sleep and was constantly hearing Shikaku's voice. After he had executed the elders who forced this on his son, the Kazakiage had begun researching seals, hoping to find a way to reinforce Gara's seal and preserve his child's sanity. Despite his public aloofness, he was a devoted father to five-year-old Tamari, four-year-old Kankuro, and three-year-old Gara. When he was unable to spend time with his children, he had his brother-in-law Yashimaru watch the children. How was the mission, Baki? It was successful, Kazuki Ajsama, but we ran into something unexpected at the end. There were more children there than we were originally informed. Really? Did you also return them to their homes? Hitsaya spoke up, showing the six children, they cannot remember where they come from, Kazuki Ajsama, or their names. We suspect a strong force was used to erase their memories. The Kazakiage's eyebrows rose in astonishment as he saw the six. The two pale-eyed children may have a he mused, and then saw the whisker marks on the blonde boy. He immediately knew what that meant. That boy is a Jinchuriki as well. He appears to be unaware of this fact. That must mean his seal is better made than Gara's. They must be from a hidden village, but I haven't heard anything about a missing Jinchuriki. Of course, any village would be smart enough to not display weakness, like admitting that a Jinchuriki, along with five other children, disappeared from within their borders. If the children's memories were erased using a, we can't remove it permanently, damaging their minds. We could attempt when they are older, but until we do, we have no clue where they came from. I know Kanoha has two clans, Kiri has two, and rumor says that AIM has one as well. Kanoha has never created a Jinchuriki, so I've heard, and I don't know what they look like. They all covered their eyes during the war so we wouldn't steal the eyes from the corpses and learn their secrets. Are you hungry he asked the children, it's almost lunchtime. The pale-eyed girl shrank behind the pale-eyed boy and the blonde boy. You're scaring her the blonde boy accused the Kazakiage. Why are you covering your face like that? The Kazakiage laughed, to protect it from the sun and the sand, young one. It is a common practice in this village. He quickly removed his hat and veil. Is that better he asked the little girl. She shyly nodded. I have a little girl of my own who is a little older than you. Would you like to meet her? I know she would love to make some new friends. I also have two little boys who are around your age as well. It's fun to make new friends, Haim the blonde boy told the little girl. Besides, I can hear your tummy rumbling. I know you're hungry. Why did you call her home the Kazakiage asked. Because she's pretty and wearing a pretty kimono like a princess would. Haim fits her. The girl blushed at the praise, and the Kazakiage smiled at the little boy's words. He looked at the others, are you hungry as well they all nodded. 
The Kazakiyaj rang for an attendant to bring lunch for all of them and observed the children. It was obvious that some of them had received some ninja training, meaning they were definitely from a hidden village, but he couldn't tell which one. Not a single child wore a village symbol or a recognizable clan crest. Once they were done eating, the six children were escorted to the bathroom so they could wash up. They all quickly finished and piled together in a corner of the Kazakiyaj's office to take a nap. What will we do with them Baki asked. Give them a home the Kazakiyaj replied. There is a reason why we were the ones to rescue these children. I'm sure we can find families willing to take them in and raise them as one of their own. I do not think it would be a good idea to separate them Tatsaya blurted out. Chunin quickly explained his outburst. In the absence of memories, these six have created very strong bonds in a short period of time. It would do more harm than good to split them up in my opinion. But who would be willing to take in six orphans the Kazakiyaj asked. I would dot the voice surprised everyone in the room. The three men had been so focused on their conversation that they had failed to notice the arrival of Chiyo Basama. The old lady was staring at the six small forms with a tenderness that most everyone in Suna believed didn't exist in the old puppeteer. You would, Chiyo-sama the Kazakiyaj repeated. But what if these children come from Kanoha? If Kanoha doesn't want them, I will take them. Perhaps through these small ones, I can find redemption and not make the same mistakes that I made with my beloved grandson Sasori. All present nodded in understanding. Sasori had deserted from the village seven years earlier, breaking Chiyo's heart. She blamed herself for his defection, having raised him after the death of his parents during the Shinobi Wars. The blonde boy is a Jinchuriki, but I doubt he is aware of the fact the Kazakiyaj informed the old woman. But he is capable of sleep, proving he was created by a true master. Hopefully, over time we will learn what demon he holds Chiyo murmured. Perhaps by studying this child's seal, we can learn how to adjust Garas so he can sleep as well. You still will take them? Yes, I will. Do not worry about me. There are still plenty of years left in this bag of bones. If they chose, they will be loyal Suna Shinobi. I will raise them as my own grandchildren. The Kazakiyaj nodded, perhaps once they are settled in, I will introduce them to my children. I will still try and find their true home, but until then, you will care for them. Chiyo nodded in understanding as she sat down to wait for her six new grandbabies to wake up. Three Anbu, Wolf, Eagle, and Leopard made their report to the Sandame Hokage, Saratobi Hirazan. I am sorry, Hokage-sama, there is no sign of the six children. We have no leads Wolf reported, with no emotion in his voice. The eagle, the only woman on the squad, was obviously trying not to cry. Her shoulders were shaking and you could hear sniffling. The professor, as he was nicknamed, gave the woman a kind smile. You can remove your masks if you wish. Here, Rin, it is okay to cry handing her a handkerchief. The eagle removed her mask to reveal a young, pretty 17-year-old with brown hair, brown eyes, and square purple clan markings on her cheeks. Wolf also removed his, revealing a masked young man with wild silver hair and one eye covered. He gently placed his arm around the woman's shoulders, trying to comfort her. Leopard pulled off his mask to reveal a high Uga male of the branch house, who was older than his two squad mates. His eyes showed even more pain than the two standing next to him. Hada Kakashi and his new wife, Narita Rin, had lost a boy they had finally adopted, their sensei's son, Namaka's Naruto. Hayuga Hizashi son, Niji, and niece, the Hayuga clan heiress, Hinata, had also disappeared the same night as Naruto. Three other children were also missing, the Nara clan heir, Shikamaru, the daughter of weapon master and maker Shimoto Kenji, Tenten, and the son of widow Tanaka Kid, Lee. The loss of the last Namakas, the Hayuga heiress and her Higasha, protector, and the Nara clan heir, was devastating to Kanoha. Even worse, Hiashi and his Ashi had managed to delay Niji from receiving the cage bird seal, so when the boy had disappeared, he was still unsealed. That had caused an uproar among the Hyuga clan elders, and Hiashi had almost lost his position as clan head. Losing Naruto was the biggest blow of all. In addition to being the last of the Namaka's clan, he was also the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi no Kitsune, the most powerful of the Biju. Kakashi, Rin, and Hizashi had been out searching for almost two months since the night of the disappearances, but had nothing to show for it. Should we inform our allies of the loss Kakashi asked, still trying to comfort the now sobbing Rin. No, it will make us seem weak. We cannot afford to let any of our enemies find out that we have lost six children with the potential to become powerful shinobi. It would be even worse if they were to hear that two of them are unsealed Hayuga and a Jinchuriki who is also an amicus. With Orochimaru's recent defection, I'm not sure who we can trust with that information. All I know is we cannot let it become known outside of the village. I will get word to Jiraiya to keep his eyes and ears open for anything that could be the six missing children. It pained the Sandame to say those words, but they were true. They couldn't afford to let their enemies know of the loss. Iwa and Kuma would be all over it. The Sandame couldn't afford the risk. The village was still trying to recover from the Kaiubi's attack three years earlier. 
are we just going to give up looking for them his ashi demanded. I lost my wife last year, I refuse to lose Niji as well. No, we aren't giving up. We'll continue to look, but we'll be subtle about it. If we hear any rumors that could be our missing young ones, you three will be the first I dispatch to check them out. Understand. The three nodded. They didn't like it, but knew the sand aim had a point. Deception was part of a shinobi's lifestyle, and right now Kano had desperately needed to maintain an illusion of strength. Bring in Hayuga Hiyashi and Hitomi, Nara Shikaku and Yoshino, Shimoto Kenji and Tama, and Tanaka Kid. I will inform them personally. Hitomi is still of delicate health Rin said, she is having difficulties with this pregnancy, and now with Hinata's disappearance the medic trailed off. I am afraid that she will lose this child. Then I will go to the Hayuga compound and inform them there. I do not want to put her in any more danger the Sandame replied. Just then, Ichiha Fugaku walked in. The Ichiha clan head blatantly ignored the Hada couple and his Ashi. Ever since the death of Ichiha Abito, all of the Ichiha clan had ignored and tried to deride Hada Kakashi for his possession of Abito Sharingan Ai and Narita Rin for performing the transplant. He was the main opponent when Kakashi and Rin went through the process of adopting Naruto. It was thanks to the friendship between Hitomi and Rin and the debt that the Hayuga fell toward the two, thanks to when Rin saved Hitomi's life when Hinata was born, that the adoption managed to go through. Did you forget we had an appointment, Hokage Fugaku asked. It's not until tomorrow Sandane replied, I am in the process of receiving a mission report for an S-ranked mission. Oh, yes. It is incredible how the Hayuga heiress and her Hugasha managed to disappear right under their all-seeing eyes. Not to mention how the copy ninja with his stolen Sharingan lost to Kaiubi's Yinchuriki. His ashi glared at the man. Ichiha clan head and commander of the military police or not, if the man didn't shut up, he was going to give him a juakin to the header voice box. Hold your tongue, Ichiha. Have you ever experienced the pain of losing a child? My Niji is just as precious to me as your Itachi is to you. Even more so. You still have Mikoto and Sasuke, my Megumi died last year. Niji was all I had left of her. Can you imagine the pain my brother and sister-in-law are going through? One child is gone, and it appears that they may lose another before it draws breath. Naruto is precious to me Rin said, staring defiantly at the Ichiha clan head. He wasn't just a piece of my beloved sensei and Nichan, he was Naruto. He is such a sweet boy, with a ready smile and willing to give you a hug whenever you need one. I am not the woman who birthed him, but I consider him to be my son. I feel the same way Kakashi added, trying not to antagonize the man. He felt in debt to the clan because of Ibido, but that didn't mean he had to like them. They had disowned Ibido posthumously for his gift to Kakashi, and that remained a source of contention between the Achiha and the Haddock. I still say that I was right to oppose your adoption of that boy. Thanks to your incompetence, we have lost Yandame's son and Kaiubi's power. And you are one of the people who wanted Naruto put to death as Ashi retorted. All you care about is the lost power. They are missing a child. As am I. We weren't searching for two months because we lost a powerful prospective shinobi, it was because six families are incomplete without their children. Yugaku didn't reply to his ashi statement. He just turned to the door and said in Sandame's direction, well, I will see you tomorrow, Hokage-sama. Hopefully no more children will go missing in the meantime Dottie was swept out of the office. Hokage-sama, you are aware of my clan suspicions his ashi spoke once the privacy seals were reactivated. A Sharingan user is the only one who could get past our clan sentries. We keep saying that this is a disappearance, but most are convinced that this is a kidnapping. The Zashi is right Kakashi added, there are too many coincidences. Niji and Hinata disappear while they are playing outside, and Naruto, Shikamaru, Tenten, and Lee all vanish from the park within half an hour of each other. This feels like a kidnapping, but who were the targets and were some merely an opportunity? I am not accusing anyone in Konoha, but his Ashi is suspicious of the Ichiha clan. But good reason his ashi replied, they despise both the Hayuga and Namikas, and are not on good terms with the Nara. They tried to blacklist Shimoto Kenji's shop in the past year, because he will not share his weapon-making secrets with them. Tsuritobi sighed, I understand your suspicions, his ashi, but we don't have any concrete proof of anything, even a kidnapping. I can't make any unfounded accusations without turning the village against itself. I will, however, inform the entire council of Naruto's true heritage if we find him, so that he will return home to a village that doesn't desire his death. Thank you, Hokage Rin whispered, gratitude evident in her voice. The three were dismissed and made their ways to their respective homes. Once at the apartment they shared, Rin went straight to the room which had a small toddler's bed and a multitude of toys. On the wall were a few framed pictures. One was of the newborn Naruto in the arms of his parents, another was of baby Naruto being held by his godfather, Jureya of the Sanin, and the final one had been taken on Naruto's third birthday. He was with Kakashi and Rin, celebrating both his birthday and adoption. Rin sat down on the bed and began crying her heart out. 
The Kashi was next to her in an instant, letting her cry into his shoulder. He shed tears of his own, giving into his own grief. The two stayed like that for hours, mourning the loss of their child. Finally, Rin raised her head and met her husband's eye. I won't give up on Naruto, but I want our own time. That way Naruto will have a mother, father, and siblings waiting for him. The Kashi nodded, when we see him, he will know that there is a place where he is wanted and loved. He will know that no matter what, we have a home for him. Thank you, Kakashi, for not saying if. Hey, nameless ones, what are you doing here a boy jeered at the six children. He then turned away from them, only to find himself face to face with three furious children. What did you call our friends a fuming 11 year old Tamari demanded. Nameless ones, because they don't have names. No family names and no given names either. Even if we do not have proper names, we do go by something other than nameless a brown haired, pale eyed boy of the group told the child. We have a family, each other and Chiyobachan. Keep your mouth shut, you appear to be more intelligent that way. Just so you know, I am called Rai. I am his sister, Kiri the blue black haired, pale eyed girl said. She was holding the hand of the blonde haired, blue eyed boy. Though I call her home the blonde added with a grin. Chiyobachan calls me Kays, because I am unpredictable and uncontrollable, like the wind. I am called Kaiko, because I like fire the brown haired, brown eyed girl told the assembling crowd of students. I am Cage, because I am good with stealth the younger of the two black haired boys introduced himself. Cage never revealed that he could manipulate his shadow to a small degree. He was by far the most intelligent of the nameless six. Kiyobachan calls me Iwa, because I am very determined and am stubborn like a rock. I also go by bushy brow, thanks to Kay's the black haired boy with the big eyebrows introduced himself. Hey, it fits Kay's replied with a grin. Ankuro stared at the students, man, do you guys have to attract a crowd every time you go somewhere? Not our fault Kaiko pointed out, you try being a novelty. And it doesn't help that we look so distinctive Rai added, like mine and Kiri's eyes, or Kaze's hair. We stand out for miles. It is obvious that we weren't born in Sunagakur. Even though you weren't born here, Suna is as much your home as it is ours red haired Gara said, standing next to his two best friends, Kaze and Kiri. You are also my family, like cousins. Exactly. We feel the same, Gara Kiri replied, giving him a smile. The other new students had backed away when they recognized the Shukaku's Jinchuriki. Their parents had warned him that he was dangerous. The teacher came into the yard. So, this is where all of the students are. Come inside, class should have started five minutes ago. I am AM Sensei, and I will be teaching the new class. The students filed off to their various classrooms, while the new students followed AM Sensei. Tamari, Cage, and Kankuro sat at the same desk. Ara, Kaze, and Kiri also sat together, as did Rai, Kaiko, and Iwa. The other students tried to stay away from the group of nine, but mainly Gara. Hayes and Kiri could tell from their friends' faces that the other children's fear hurt Gara. It's okay, Gara, it's not you they are scared of. It's Shukaku Kiri whispered. They don't know you. Hayes followed Kiri's example in trying to cheer their friend up. Yeah, they're just a bunch of fraidy cats and spineless wimps for letting others tell them who they should and shouldn't be friends with. Don't worry about them, we know different things. Tamari, Kankuro, Cage, Rai, Kaiko, Iwa, Baki-sensei, Chiyobachan, Yor, and Yor Yashimaru Jison. We don't care about Shukaku Baka, because we know Gara. Gara gave a slight smile to Kays and Kiri, grateful for their words. Gara was actually a very shy and quiet child, much like Kiri, but Kays had managed to pull both of them out of their shells. The three were rarely apart, and when they were, Gara stayed with his siblings while Kiri stayed with Rai. When Tamari had asked him about why he was so close to Kaze and Kiri, Gara had replied, they make me feel happy, and that I'm not the monster that the other children think I am. The first day of class went well, though the nameless six, as they were called, were bored out of their minds. Chiyo Bachan had begun teaching them basic ninja skills within a year of taking them in. She told them that it was obvious that Rai, Kiri, Kaze, and Cage had received shinobi training before, mostly in Tejutsu. Not a single child was interested in Chiyo's specialty, puppets, but Kaiko was showing promise with marksmanship. Iwa was an interesting case. He had a rare condition involving his chakra coils that made it impossible for him to mold chakra. Iwa was still determined to become a shinobi like his friends, so he focused his studies exclusively on Tejutsu and Dot. At the end of the day, Baki met the nine children outside of the academy. He was assigned to tutor Tamari, Kankuro, and Gara, and the six had been invited by the Sabaku siblings. Baki didn't mind. Since he had rescued the children, he felt it appropriate to check up on their progress. He was a stern and demanding teacher, but Kays could get him to crack a smile with his antics. He would never say this out loud, but soon Ajonin was impressed by the talent possessed by the group. As the afternoon passed, he assisted all of them as needed. 
Age began playing with his shadow, managing to stop Kankuro long enough for Tamari to send him flying with one of her winds. Kaiko was flinging kunai and shuriken at Gara, trying to penetrate his sand shield. Rai and Iwa were double teaming against Kaze and Kiri in a Tajutsu spar, and Baki had honestly no idea who would win. While Kankuro was chewing out Cage and Tamari, Yashimaru approached Baki. The Kazakiyaj is in a meeting which is running late with the village elders. Chiyobasama is there as well. I was asked to retrieve the children and let them spend the night at my home. They don't know when they will be out. I'm cooking dinner right now. Yashimaru's eyes traveled over the training area. They are all turning out to be remarkable shinobi. Baki nodded in agreement. These nine children are the future of Suna. I think that is a good thing. It was a great day when we found the nameless six five years ago and brought them back here. They should be finished in an hour's time. You are welcome to watch and observe. Thank you Yashimaru replied and sat down on the sidelines to observe the children's training. He was a medic by training, but still an accomplished ninja, having served for a time in the Suna Anbu. Once Baki had dismissed the nine, Yashimaru stood up and called out to the children, the Kazakiyaj and Chiyobasama are in a meeting that is running late, so they ask that I feed you dinner and let you sleep over at my home. Thanks, Yashimaru San Kaiko called out as she picked up the final kunai and shuriken she had been using. Giri asked, Yashimaru san, after dinner, could you show me some more medical ninjutsu? He gave the little pale eyed girl a smile, sure, Kiri chan. You want to be a medic? I would, just so I could help my friends and family, Kiri replied, blushing a bit. Chiyo Bachan says that I have excellent chakra control, which any good medic needs. She's been teaching me about herbs so I can make healing creams and poisons. She is very good at that, Yashimaru replied, learn all you can from her, Kiri. Is she teaching all of you? Yes, but Kiri is by far the best at them Rai replied, giving his little sister a smile. Actually, they were half-siblings. When she took them in, Chio had run a genetics test to determine how Rai and Kiri were related. She had discovered that Rai and Kiri had the same father, but different mothers. They didn't care, and always called each other brother and sister. Yashimaru Jison, what are we having for dinner Gara asked. Hurry, don't worry, Rai, I didn't make it too spicy. Any dessert Tamari asked. Chocolate chip cookies he replied, to the cheers of the nine kids. The group followed him through the streets of Suna, ignoring and trying to hide Gara from the villagers. Kiri held his hand in cases, while Tamari walked on Gara's other side, sending glares at everyone who looked at her little brother the wrong way. Paige murmured, this is so stupid. Can't those people see that Gara isn't a huge sand tanuki? Gara and Shukaku are two different souls sharing the same body. They are scared of him, but I am, too. He keeps saying that he wants blood Gara whispered. He is angry that I won't give it to him. It will be fine, Gara Kunkaiko replied, ruffling his hair. Just tell Shukaku that you need to become a ninja first. He says it takes too long for me to grow up. He wants blood now. Well, he can't get it now Kaze replied, so tell him to shut up and ignore him. Gara nodded and didn't say any more. After they had eaten dinner, the nine children began to play and do their homework, while Yashimaru baked the cookies and demonstrated the mystic palm to Kiri. So, you can use chakra to help close wounds and revive people. Can you also use it to fix a broken bone, like when Kaiko broke her wrist last year Kiri asked, intrigued by the uses of the dot. Yashimaru gave her a small smile, yes, but it depends on where the bone is. Sometimes, it is easier and less painful if you do it other ways. The little girl nodded, okay. I can help everyone if I am a medic. I just won't need to heal Gara because his sand protects him, or Kaze because he heals so quickly. But I can still get hurt, unlike Gara Kaze replied, so you might need to heal me a little bit, Haim Dadi gave her a smile, which she returned with a slight blush. Are you okay, Haim? Your face is red. Did you forget to put on sunscreen? No, I'm okay, Kaze. Let's go play a game. Yashimaru sighed at Kaze's cluelessness. Kiri appears to have a crush on her best friend. When is the Kazakiyaj going to reveal that Kaze is also a monster? Did he steal his mother's life when he was born like Gara stole my sister's life? What is wrong with these children? They are not scared of Gara and have no problem being close to him. Does the Shukaku have them bewitched? Or maybe it is the other unknown demon that Kaze holds. Suna must be rid of these monsters. He then left to check on the cookies and take them out of the oven. Once the children began to drop off and fall asleep, Yashimaru moved them onto feud and set up in two different rooms, one for the boys and one for the girls. Finally, only Kaze and Gara were still awake. The two boys were outside, picking out what constellations they could with the light of the full moon shining brightly over them. The two boys were startled when Gara's sand abruptly reacted, covering the two of them protectively. Kaze peered around the edge of the sand shield and saw a man with his head covered by a turban, flinging kunai and shuriken at him. Die, demon scum. Gara isn't a demon Kaze yelled. 
The man began to run at him, and Gara San violently reacted, encasing and crushing him. Gara was staring at the cocoon of sand with wide, frightened eyes. Let him go Gara yelled, and the sand obeyed. What the boy saw shocked them. Their attacker was Yashimaru. Why Gara gasped. The destroy the two monsters of Suna. You, who killed my sister as she gave you life. You're one as well. We took you and the other abandoned ones in after we killed those slaves. Would your friends still stand by you if they knew that you are a demon like Gara? Would little innocent Kiri still love you if she knew? Or, would you kill her, like how Gara killed my sister who loved him as well? What do you mean Kaze demanded. The whisker marks on your cheeks and your fast healing ability are all signs that you are a demon. We aren't demons. Gara didn't kill his mother, she died. And I won't hurt my friends or family, especially Kiri Kaze began to run at Yashimaru in his rage. Gara chased after his friend to try to keep him from doing something stupid. Yashimaru began to laugh as he opened his vest to reveal explosive notes pasted to his body. Farewell, demons. May you never bother Suna or take another life again. The explosion was heard throughout Suna. It also woke the seven sleeping children. Kiri was the first on the scene and screamed when she saw Gara protected by his sand shield, and Kaze flung back against the balcony rail, bleeding. Kaze. Gara. Someone, help. Hazuki and Chiyo ran into the hospital. Tamari had been the only child to keep their head after the explosion and sent Kankuro to get them. Anbu had shown up and taken both Gara and Kaze to the hospital. Kiri couldn't stop crying, Rai kept trying to comfort his sister, and Kaiko, Iwa and Kage were in shock. Kankuro was as well, but he had managed to explain that there had been an explosion of some sort and that both Kaze and Gara were caught in it. Once inside the emergency room, the Kazakiyaj saw Gara sitting on a bed, appearing to be unharmed. Gara, are you okay? The boy raised his head, and Masa gasped when he saw the dead look in his son's blue-green eyes and the kanji for love carved into his forehead above his left eye. Son, what happened to you? Father, did I kill mother because I am a demon? What? Did I kill mother because I am a demon? Who told you that pack of lies? Masa demanded, slowly moving towards his son. He didn't want to startle or scare Gara right now. Yashimaru. He said that I am a demon who killed mother because she loved me. He also said the case is one as well. He told us that one day Kaze will kill Kiri because he is a demon and she loves him. Masa sat down on the bed next to his son. Gara, what Yashimaru told you was a lie. Your mother, Kurara, was very sick when she gave birth to you. The village council was forcing me to seal Shukaku in you and turn you into a Jinchiriki. A sacrifice was needed for the sealing ceremony and your mother volunteered because she knew that she wouldn't survive giving birth to you. Sometimes death happens and there is nothing you can do to prevent it. Your mother's death was like that. What about Kaze? Kaze is a Jinchiriki as well, though I do not know what demon he holds. Gara, remember this. Jinchiriki hold and imprison demons, they themselves aren't demons. About what else he said, do you really believe that Kaze could kill Kiri? Gara shook his head, no. He would kill himself first. Right. Jinchiriki aren't the demons they hold. The demon Kaze holds might want to kill Kiri, but Kaze never will, and the demon can't make him. You didn't kill your mother. But, father, my sand crushed Yashimaru, and the monster liked it Gara informed his father, tears starting to streak down the boy's cheeks. Did you? Gara, you are sad about what happened, meaning you regret what happened. Your action saved your life and Kaze's as well. You aren't Shukaku, Gara, because you feel remorse for what happened. Yashimaru was wrong about both you and Kaze. You contain Shukaku, you are not Shukaku. Kaze holds a demon, but he isn't the demon as well. Do you believe me? Gara stared at his father for a long moment and then finally nodded. Masa gave his son a hug and Gara began to cry on his father's shoulder. Chiyo came over, followed by the other children, who she had finally calmed down. Little pale-eyed Kiri was clutching Chiyo's robe, eyes still swollen and red from crying. Tamari and Kankuro rushed over to embrace their brother as well. Gara-kun, are you okay? Kiri asked once the Sabaku family had let go of their youngest member. He nodded at his friends and Kaiko, Rai, and I would gave him another hug. Cage punched him playfully on the shoulder, saying, you are practically indestructible Gara. Remind me not to attack you anytime soon. It would be too troublesome. One of the doctors came out of the trauma room where they had been treating Kaze. Chiyo-sama. Yes. I have news of the child called Kaze. Is he going to be okay? Kiri asked, stuttering in fear. His injuries are serious, but not fatal. There is only one injury that will take some time to heal. One of his lower vertebrae was dislocated slightly when he was blown back and landed from the explosion. We managed to move it back into place, but the area will take some time to recover from the trauma. Is there any nerve damage? There doesn't appear to be any. His healing factor has probably made sure of that. He will most likely have function and feeling in his lower limbs, but don't be surprised if for a week or two he is having some trouble. 
He also has a concussion, some inner ear damage, whiplash, and some broken bones. Can we see him Kaiko asked. We have moved him to a regular room and he is now awake. However, only Chiyosama can't see him tonight. The rest of you will be allowed to see him tomorrow. And at least Kiri come with me. She and Kaze are very close, and she was the first one to find him and Garachiyo whispered. I doubt the poor girl will be able to sleep tonight until she sees the case is okay. The doctor looked at Kiri, her little hand still clutching Chiyo's robe, her slight trembling form, and her wide, frightened pale eyes. Deciding to ignore the hospital rules, he nodded. A nurse led Chiyo and Kiri to the room where Kaze was resting. As they walked in, Kaze saw the men turned his head away from the door. Go away. His voice sounded lifeless and dead. Kaze, what's wrong? Chiyo asked. You need to stay away from me, Kaze replied, still refusing to look at them. By Kaze, Kiri pleaded, tears starting to form at Kaze's brush off. Because I'll kill you if you don't. I'm a demon, Kiri. Demons kill those who love them, or anyone else who gets in the way. I want you to stay safe, which means that you need to stay away from me. Chiyo was shocked, who told you that, Kaze? Some of it Yashimaru told me before he tried to blow me and Gara up. The rest I heard from after I blacked out. I heard him, Bachin. He kept saying that he was going to get out of this cage again, and when he did, he was going to kill me, my family, and was going to finish destroying my home. It was awful. What did the demon look like? I don't remember. All I remember seeing was red, water, and many tails. Did he identify himself? No, he didn't say who he was. I don't want him to hurt anyone, especially my friends, so I need to stay away from him. Gio was about to say something when she noticed Kiri walk over to Kaze and slap him soundly across the face. You're wrong Kiri whispered. You aren't any more of a demon than Gara is. What do we always tell him when he starts feeling sad? Gara holds a demon, he isn't a demon. If you contain a demon, you definitely aren't a demon. You are scared of the demon getting loose and hurting all of us. So don't let him get out. You can sleep, your seal must be stronger than Gara's, so the demon can't get loose. He was probably trying to scare you. He succeeded. Now I know why Gara is so scared of Shikaku. Why are you scared? You are Kaze, who was brave enough to climb on the academy roof during our first week. You are also the one who would rather hurt himself than see your friends get hurt. She took a deep breath and continued, look at me, Kaze. The boy slowly turned his head to look at her. I know I am safest with you, because I know you and trust you, even if you do contain a demon. I don't believe a word of what Yashimaru or that Yakai Baka told you. You couldn't intentionally hurt me, any more than Rai could. Believe me, Kaze, and not what you were told. She is right, Kaze Chiyo said, you are different from your demon. You are my little Kaze, and I know that you aren't a demon. I've seen demons in human form, and trust me, you aren't one. Tears began flowing from Kaze's deep blue eyes. Kiri began crying again, and she ran over and gave him a hug. Chiyo let the two children weep together. After an hour had passed, the doctor came in. Chiyo sama, it is time to leave. Chiyo nodded and turned to get Kiri. She had to stifle a laugh when she realized that the two had fallen asleep, arms wrapped around each other, or just one in Kaze's case, since the other had a cast on it. They look so cute together. Chiyo found herself wishing for a camera to capture the touching scene. Kiri's head was resting on Kaze's shoulder while he had his head nuzzled into her hair. Can she stay here? I don't want to leave Kaze alone, and I doubt I could get Kiri to release him. The doctor looked at the two sleeping eight-year-olds and nodded. That is a good idea. Someone he trusted tried to kill him tonight, so leaving the little girl here would help him. I'll get some additional blankets for them. Gio tucked the children in and gave them both kisses on their foreheads. Kay's responded by snuggling closer to Kiri, a small smile on his face. Sleep well, my little ones, and may the spirits of our ancestors watch over and protect you. She left them and noticed the two Suna and Bu watching over the room. Let me know when they wake. Yes, Chiyo Basama they replied. She walked to the waiting room and saw her other four grandchildren waiting for her. How's Kay's Iwa asked. He needs to stay here tonight and maybe for a few more days. He was pretty badly hurt she informed them. Kiri will be staying with him tonight and we will bring her home tomorrow. Why? Did Kiri get hurt too Iwa asked. No, but she can help Kay's feel better. Let's go home. The five headed home and she quickly tucked them in. Once the last child, Rai, was asleep, a voice sounded from behind Chiyo. Hello, sister her brother Abizo greeted. What brings you here at this hour, brother she replied, closing the door to Rai and Iwa's room. I heard of the accident involving young Gara and Kaze he replied. Are they okay? Nothing that can't be healed with their bodies, but injuries to their souls which may be harder to heal she informed him. Kaze was told that he was a Jinchuriki today. Kiri also knows, and I will tell the others tomorrow. Sister, I am curious. Why did you take in the nameless six? 
I grow more convinced that as time passes that their birthplace is Konoha. Keiji's abilities remind me of a Konoha clan that is rumored to be great strategists with the skill of manipulating their shadows. There are also two there. Rai and Kiri's unusual eyes may result from a dot. If they have one, they have shown no signs of activating a Chi or reminded her brother. I may dislike Konoha because their warrior the White Fang killed my son and daughter-in-law and left Sasori an orphan. But how many of their children did we kill and leave orphaned? The Kazakiage nearly lost his life in a battle against the Kanoha and Butin Kitsune and Raven, but he still willingly signed the alliance. These small ones weren't even born when my son was killed. Why should I blame them for something that they had no involvement in? The ones at fault are the ones who began the war, and they are all dead. You have grown wise, sister her brother replied after pondering her words. We had both better get some sleep. Neither of us is as young as we used to be. Hayes and Gara recovered slowly from their experience. Gara tightened his bonds even more with his friends and family, knowing their love for him and his for them, kept him from being the monster that everyone else thought he was. Kaze did the same, but his bond with Kiri became the strongest. The others of the Nameless Six didn't treat him differently, for which he was grateful. Hayes's back was slowly healing, but he was in pain for about a month. He had some difficulty with the academy and struggled with his tojutsu during that period. Chio told him that he needed to rest and relax to help heal, but Kaze was too stubborn. But there was one more thing he was having trouble with. One night, about three weeks after the incident, Kiri awoke to hear someone moaning and gasping, like they were in pain or that they were very scared. She thought, and immediately left the room she shared with Kaiko to find her friend Crush. Hayes was sleeping alone, because Cage had been complaining that Kaze was talking in his sleep, making it impossible for Cage to sleep. Kiri poked her head into the room, tiptoed in, and gently shook Kaze awake. Kaze, what's wrong? Kiri? What are you doing here he asked. I heard you from my room. What was wrong? Were you having a nightmare? Yes. I keep remembering that demon. He won't shut up about how he'll break out of the seal one day and finish what he began. Kiri, has Suna ever been attacked by a demon? No, not since the beginning, before Shukaku was sealed in the kettle. Do you think he is talking about our original home? Maybe, or maybe he is referring to Suna. If I meet him again, I'll ask him where he wants to destroy it. Maybe then we'll know where we were born. But isn't our home still Suna? We wouldn't know anyone in our birth village. We'll figure it out, Kiri, and we'll stick together. Kaze yawned and twisted his back, trying to stretch it and relieve the stiffness. Kaze, turn over and I'll rub your back. It should help you feel better and go back to sleep. He did so, and Kiri got to work. She ended up falling asleep there. The next morning, Chio was shocked to find Kiri sleeping with Kaze. At least they are still young. I don't have to worry about them doing anything inappropriate too soon. Anyone who knows them knows that Kiri most likely fell asleep trying to help Kaze feel better. A few minutes later, Kaze opened his eyes to find out that the pillow he thought he had been holding was actually Kiri. She was sleeping in the same position that she had been when they fell asleep in the hospital together. I didn't have any more nightmares. Take that, Yakai Baka. Thank you Haim. Kiri's eyes opened and she blinked the pale orbs at Kaze. Good morning, Kaze, how did you sleep? Much better and no nightmares, thanks to you he replied, enfolding her into a huge hug. Imino Aruka looked over his class of newly graduated students, all wearing their new Kanoha aids. Most were the children of civilians, but a good portion of the class were from the shinobi clans. He remembered what the other teacher, Jonan Hadakrin said about the ones who were missing. We have the Yamanaka heiress, the Akamichi heir, the Aburam heir, the second heir to the Ichiha, and the second heir to the Inuzuka. According to Rin, the Nara heir, the Namaka's heir, and the Hayuga heiress would have been in this group as well. I wonder if her husband will finally pass a Genin team this year. Rumor has it that if this team doesn't pass, he won't be forced to take another Genin team. Aruka sensei why are we waiting Yamanaka Ino asked. Rin sensei has the team lists he replied, what are the odds she got lost on the road to life again laughter rang throughout the classroom. The classroom door opened right then, and a heavily pregnant Kinoichi walked in. No, I didn't get lost. I just had to run to the store for these dots she held up a box of cookies. Just a little something to celebrate your graduation. Rin sensei, you're the best Akamichi Chaoji called out. The former Anbu was a popular teacher, not only for her kindness, but also for her knowledge. She had been a student of the Yandame, and was one of the youngest veterans of the Third Shinobi War. When I read your names, I want you to come forward, grab a cookie, and then sit down with your new teams. Remember that the most important thing for Kanoha Ninja to use is teamwork. My Jonin sensei told my team that, and now I pass it on to you Rin announced. The naming and assigning of teams went quickly, and soon Jonin sensei started coming in to collect their students. Haruka and Rin greeted the instructors, having worked with many of them over their respective careers. 
The girls in the class all giggled and sighed when one of the Jonin senseis, a tall man with one eye covered, a mask covering his face, and wild silver hair, gave Rin sensei a kiss on her tattoo cheek. Who is that? I think it's her husband, Hata Kakashi, the copy ninja. They say he knows over 1000. Ichiha Sasuke was the only person in class, if not the whole school, to dislike Rin. He shot a glare at the group of civilian children that had been talking. The only reason he can is because that useless teammate of senseis gave his remaining Sharingan eye to him. We Ichiha are the elite of Konoha because of it. It should never have been shared with him. One of his worst nightmares was sitting next to him. Sasuke-kun, do you want to go get lunch together after we meet with our new sensei? He shot a glance at his questioner. Pink-haired, green-eyed Haruno Sakura, fangirl number one was on his team. Why? Because we're teammates now, we should spend time together and get to know each other Sakura replied. The other person on their team nodded in agreement. Inuzuka Kiba was the third team member of Team 9. She's right. The puppy on his head barked in agreement. Are you going to eat your cookie, Sasuke? You can have it. I don't eat sweet stuff. A few rows away, Yamanaka Ino, Akamichi Chaoji, and Aburam Shino were sitting together. Ino was trying to sit as far away as possible from the, the creepy bug boy as she called Shino. Hey, Ino, do you remember Shikamaru Chaoji randomly asked. She looked at him in confusion, who? Shikamaru, our dad's friend and Shikaku's only kid. Do you remember him? Ino narrowed her eyes, obviously trying to remember. Maybe. Was he the black-haired kid who was always sleeping or watching clouds? Tauji nodded, that's him. I wonder what happened to him. My father was one of the ones that was sent to look for him and the other missing children Shino said. No one was able to find any clues. I remember that. The whole village was in an uproar because six kids were kidnapped. My mom didn't let me out of her sight for a year. My parents were the same way Chaoji added to Ino's comment, two of the Hayuga children were kidnapped that night as well. That must be why you never see any of their clan wandering around alone Ino murmured. My adopted son was another one who disappeared that night Rin sensei whispered to the three. Little Namek is Naruto, my sensei's son. It's nice to know that some of their own generation are missing them as well. Are you team 10 a bearded jonin about Rin's age, asked the three genin. They are Rin replied, you're in charge of them now, Asuma. Good luck, all four of you. Ino got up, let me know when the baby is born, Rin sensei. I have the perfect gift for you. Don't worry, I will. Pretty soon, the entire room was empty, except for Team 9 and the two senseis. Rin laughed, your sensei will be here in just a few minutes. He was just delayed a bit. Right then, the door was flung open and a voice yelled, dynamic entry a man in a green suit, his Hittite tied around his waist, an open jounin vest, and a shiny bold haircut jumped into the room, startling Sasuke, Sakura, and Kiba. I am your new sensei, Mido guy. I know that Rin has done an excellent job of nurturing your flames of youth. Now it is my job to turn them into a blazing inferno. I don't scare them Rin muttered. She and Kakashi remembered what it was like to work with the over-enthusiastic ninja from years earlier. He had almost driven them crazy. I hope he will be able to calm Sasuke's arrogance down before it gets him into trouble one of these days. He should also whip Sakura into shape. But if wasn't for her amazing chakra control, I would say she has chosen the wrong career. Guy will also be able to help Kiba clean up his tojutsu and become more efficient, making his clan techniques more effective. You know Rin Sensei Sakura asked. Even though her beloved Sasuke Kun didn't like the Kanoichi, Sakura secretly admired her. It was mainly because Rin was pretty, a respected ninja, and she had married her teammate, like how Sakura hoped would happen with her and Sasuke. Yes, I have worked with her and my eternal rival had a Kakashi quite a few times during the years. I immediately offered my heart to your beautiful sensei, but hers had already been ensnared by Kakashi, and nothing I could do would get her to give it to me. Why does he always say that about me Rin wondered. Let us take our leave, so we can get to know each other guy said as he exited the room with three shock genin following him. Rin turned to Aruka and burst out laughing. I would feel bad for those three if I didn't know that they will learn a lot of things from Guy. I wonder how many teams will pass the Jonin Sensei's tests this year. What are the odds Kakashi's team will pass Aruka asked as he grabbed a leftover cookie. I don't know. He uses the same bell test that our Sensei, Jiraiya, and the Sandane used with their teams. It just depends on if they are willing to sacrifice for each other and put the team's needs ahead of their own personal ones Rin replied, also munching on a cookie. So, Iruka, do you want to get some lunch to celebrate the graduation of the latest class? Iruka gave her a grin, are you sure your husband won't be jealous and decide to introduce me to the Rikiri? Iruka, we're just colleagues, friends, and you are younger than me. Don't worry, the other teachers will be joining us. Also, Anko mentioned that she might be joining us. Rin couldn't hide a grin as she saw the blush on Aruka's face. Anko said she would come. 
The uh, why don't you ask her out? Because she outranks me. Aruka, I outrank you, and you have no problem with me. Anko doesn't bite, unless you manage to piss her off, which you want. She thinks your scar is cute Rin continued, trying to get the young Chunin to make a move on the Takibetsu Jonin. Rin, along with her friends, Kurinai and Yugao, thought that Aruka could be the perfect person to help heal Anko's heart. The two quickly finished cleaning the classroom and left to meet the other teachers at the local barbecue restaurant, run by members of the Akamichi clan. As they walked in, a shout rang out, surprise. Rin was floored. All of her friends were there, along with a few others. Those people were Hayuga Hiyashi, Hitomi and Hizashi, Nara Shikaku and Yoshino, and Shimoto Kenji and Tama, the parents of the missing kids. Tanaka Kid had passed away the year before from a stroke. Hitomi walked up and pulled the young woman into a hug. Rin had been the one who had attended her during every one of her pregnancies. Because of complications that had arisen when her youngest, Hanabi, was born, Rin had performed a hysterectomy. Hitomi often called Rin her little sister, and now during Rin's first pregnancy, had been a great support to her. We are happy for you, little medic Hitomi whispered in her ear. Thank you Rin replied, starting to cry. Drat these hormones. Okay, no tears today, except from the pregnant lady Anko said, walking up next to Rin. Are you sure you're looking forward to it a little? You bet. I can't wait for him to arrive. Kurin I gaped, him. You're having a boy. I found out about an accident when I was examining myself last night Rin sheepishly admitted. And then I blurted it out to Kakashi before I even realized it. I win the pot Anko called out, pay up, everyone. No, nothing gets paid out until the baby is born Yugao chastised her friend. Rin just shook her head at their antics. I should have expected this, Rin ruefully thought. Just then, Kakashi walked into the restaurant. So, was she surprised the copy ninja asked Aruka. She was Aruka replied, watching as people found seats in the restaurant and began ordering lunch. Aruka found himself next to Anko, while Kakashi sat next to his wife. Presents were given, and stories were exchanged as everyone celebrated the impending birth. Once the party had ended, the Haddock family walked back to their apartment. Kakashi was carrying almost all of the gifts they had received. Rin was carrying just one, a gift from Hitomi. It was a picture of Naruto and Hinata, taken just the day before the kidnapping, Hinata's birthday. The caption said the next Kitsune and Karasu. Rin looked at her husband's arms, filled to overflowing with presents. Kakashi, are you sure that you don't need any help? I'm fine, Rin-chan. I don't want you carrying a lot this close to having the baby Kakashi replied. The two managed to make it to their apartment and inside without Kakashi dropping anything. All of the baby stuff was placed in the room designated as the nursery. Rin paused and looked at the picture of the toddler Naruto and imagined him among the students she had been teaching at the academy. Are you more your father's son or your mother's? Are you being taken care of? Do you have friends and a family? Are you still alive? A sudden movement from her midsection jolted her out of her melancholy thoughts. I'm just worried about your big brother, baby. It's okay. I wonder if Naruto would have passed my test Kakashi said, startling Rin. Hopefully, yes, but you wouldn't have been allowed to teach him she replied. I wonder how Guy's team will turn out. Who knows? I might feel sorry for them, except from what you said, Guy is the best possible teacher for them. Aruka originally suggested you to be their sensei, but Ichiha Fugaku demanded that the Sharingan thief be kept as far away from his son as possible. Rin yawned, time for me to take a nap. Do you enjoy making mommy tired she whispered to her unborn baby. Bakashi, who never wore his mask when he and Rin were alone, gave a smile at the sight of Rin talking with their unborn son. We have to keep faith, we have to keep believing. Naruto, you have a family waiting for you. The senior class at the Sunagakur Ninja Academy sat silently in their seats, attention focused on their two instructors, A.M. Sensei and Hasu Sensei. They had taken their graduation exams the day before, and all of the students who had passed were there. The top students were the Kazakija's children and the nameless six. A.M.'s cool sand-colored eyes swept across the classroom, faint pride in them because of the students' accomplishments. Because Suna is a smaller village than either Kanoha or Iwa, the academy was quite tough, determined to weed out the students who weren't completely dedicated to the path of a shinobi. No fangirls and lone wolves survived to their graduation day. All of the students in front of her had proven that they had what it took and that would make any teacher proud. I will begin announcing the teams you have been placed in. Team 1 will have Sora, Juro, and Kinu. Team 2 is Tamari, Kankuro, and Cage. Team 3 has Gara, Kays, and Kiri. Team 4 is Rai, Kaiko, and Iwa. Team 5 has Take, Fayoko, and Aria. Congratulations, Genin of Suna AM Sensei announced. The children all smiled, wearing their new Suna Hittites. We will break for lunch, and then you will return here to meet your Jonin Senseis. Hayes turned to his friends, let's go home. 
Chiyo Bachan said she was making a special lunch for us in honor of our graduation. What is she making Kankuro asked. Soba with animal and amizo broth, dumplings, red bean soup, and sesame pancakes I were reported. That sounds good to Mari News, can we join you? She told us to invite you Kaiko informed them. The nin made their way to Chiyo's home. The six were dressed in loose tunics and pants, with black sandals and turbans, typical of Suna Shinobi. Her I wore a tan tunic and dark brown pants, I wore a brown tunic and khaki pants, Kaiko had a high collared off white shirt and dark red pants, Cage wore a dark brown tunic and black pants, Kays wore a dark orange tunic and khaki pants, and Kiri wore a dark purple kimono style tunic and charcoal pants. They all looked like Suna Shinobi, until you got close enough to see some of their features, like Kays's hair, or Rai and Kiri's eyes. Chiyo greeted them as they entered their home. Lunch was ready and waiting on the table. So, did you all get placed into teams? Yes Rai told her, Iwa, Kaiko and I are a team. Tamari, Cage and Kankuro make up another, and Gara, Keiz and Kiri are together as well. We will find out who our Jonin senseis are when we return to school this afternoon. Chiyo nodded, proud of her grandchildren and their friends, and also grateful for the team arrangements. They made excellent teams. Are you all happy with the arrangements? Yes Kiri stated, I work best with Kays and Gara. I'm also happy Gara-kun is on a team with people who like him and aren't afraid of him. I'm grateful that I'm with someone smart like Tamari Cage said, hopefully our intelligence will balance out the lack that our other teammate exhibits. Hey, wait a minute Kankura yelled, once he realized that Cage was referring to him. Everyone else just laughed. I am not an idiot. I have a brain and I know how to use it, Cage. Then use it for more than just your puppets, and trying to hit on girls Cage deadpanned. Our team is a good combination of skills Rai said once the laughter had died down. We have a long-range fighter in Kaiko, and Iwa, and I are great with close to mid-range. Gio smiled as she started serving the meal. The talk died down as the new Suna Genin began to eat. All of the boys had entered the stage where their stomachs couldn't keep up with their growing bodies. The girls ate with enthusiasm as well, but not stuffing everything in sight like the boys. Once the children were done eating, Gio turned to them. I am very proud of you. Remember, your actions as Genin will reflect not only on yourselves, but also your instructors, myself, the Kazakiage, and Sunagakur no Sato. Bring honor to us and your ancestors, even if you don't know who they are, because they still know you. Ha! Ah, Chiyo Basama they replied in unison. Once they had returned to the academy, AM Sensei and Hasu Sensei were waiting for them. The graduates were seated in their new teams and called forward one team at a time to be introduced to their Jonin Senseis. Tamari, Cage, and Kankuro Sensei was Katsu, one of the top strategists of Suna. Baki was named as Gara, Keiz, and Kiri Sensei, being one of the few Jonin in Suna who had no problems at all with the two Jinchuriki. Jonin Genshuro, who excelled with Tajutsu, Poisons, and Explosions, was the one chosen as Sensei for Rai, Kaiko, and Iwa. Baki led his new team to a training area on the outskirts of Suna. All right, even though we already know each other, I still want you to introduce yourselves. Try to include something that I don't already know about you three. I am Baki Sensei, a Jonin of Suna, and I was the leader of the team that rescued Kays, Kiri, and the others from those slavers almost 10 years ago. I have also been tutoring Tamari, Kankuro, and Gara for the past 5 years. Hi, I'm Kays. I like Raymond, training, and my good friends Kiri, Gara, Kage Iwa, Rai, Kaiko, Tamari, and Kankuro. I don't like idiots and demons, though I've only met mine once. I want to become one of the best shinobi Suna has ever seen, though I don't want to be Kazakiage. Way too much paperwork for my tastes. Everyone began laughing at that. Paperwork truly was the bane of every cage. My dream is to one day find out who I really am and where I was born, and to have a family of my own with a certain, special Kinoichi. His blue eyes flickered to Kiri before he turned back to Baki. Baki hid a smile. I may not have found a special girl yet, but he has. Good luck to you, Kays. Keep her safe. I'm Kiri, but Kays likes to call me Haim. I like sweet rolls, my brother Rai, and my friends. I don't like people who judge others without getting to know them, and seafood. I want to become a great Kanoichi and medic like the San and Senjutsu native of Kanoha. I also want to know my real name, and have a family with the person who is most special to me. Baki. Raised an eyebrow at the mention of Senjutsu Nade. Do I know any medics who could tutor her? She does have great chakra control. I am Sabaku no Gara. I like my friends, cookies, gizzard, tongue, which Kankuro says is really weird, and my family. I don't like Shukaku. I want to get Shukaku's seal fixed so he will shut up and to become a great like my father and the Sandane. I don't mind the paperwork because I am able to ignore Shukaku while I do it. I also hope to find a special person like Keiz and Kiri. Aki had to stifle his laughter as both Keiz and Kiri blushed a bright red at Gara's innocent comment. 
or maybe not so innocent, judging by the smirk of the red-haired Jinchuriki's face. What about Kaiko Baki asked Gara. Her special person is Rai, and I think Tamari is Keija's special person, no matter how much he denies it Gara stated matter of factually. I feel sorry for the other senseis Baki murmured. He had the three spar against each other and then tested their elemental affinities at the end of practice. Gara was a combined earth-wind type, which didn't surprise Baki at all, considering his sand. Kei's had wind as a primary and water a secondary affinity. Kiri's primary affinity was water and her secondary was lightning. This will be interesting. Once I've taught them some more tactics and general use of ninjutsu, I'll get them started on basic elemental composition. On top of that, I need to find a medic who would be willing to tutor Kiri in a few months. Baki continued to plan as he dismissed his team to go home and informed them that they were meeting tomorrow at 8 am at the same training ground. Ara headed home and Kei's and Kiri walked to their own home. Both were embarrassed to look at each other because of Gara's comment at the beginning of their team practice. Hayes grew tired of the slightly awkward silence. Kiri, do you really think of me as your special person? Because I think of you as mine. I always have, Haim, from the day I saw you crying next to me when we were with those slavers Baki Sensei rescued us from. You were sad and quiet, but you still tried to help me feel better. You also helped me when my back was hurting, and you helped me sleep when I kept having those nightmares about the demon I hold. I think of you as more than my best friend, Kiri. Kiri looked at him with her pale eyes shining. I did all that because you are my special person, Kaze. You make people laugh, you always work your hardest, and you never go back on your word. You helped protect me from bullies at school and helped me overcome when I got scared. I've always admired you, Kaze, and you have always been my special person. Before she could lose her nerve, she got up on her tiptoes and gently pressed her lips to Kaze's cheek. As Kiri kissed him, Kaze's mind went completely blank. He had no clue what to do, and the only thing he knew was this, he didn't want her to stop. He wrapped his arms around her waist to hold her close. When they finally parted for air, the two stared at each other, each seeing the depth of the feelings they had for each other. Kiri rested her head on his shoulder, while Kaze continued to hold her close. We should be getting home, Kiri Kaze whispered, Chio Bachan will be wondering where we are. Okay, but just one second she replied and gave him another kiss. They were surprised to hear someone clearing their throat. Kaze went white as he realized that it was Rai. He dropped his arms from around Kiri's waist and jumped away. I'm dead, I'm so dead. Rai is going to beat the stuffing out of me when we go to bed tonight. Those were the only thoughts going through Kaze's head. Kiri just turned to Rai, what is it, Niacin? Geo Bachan sent me to find you too, since it is time for dinner Rai replied. You had better take care of my sister or else I will take care of you. Kaze just nodded while Kiri giggled and took his hand. Rai just shook his head at their antics as he followed them back to their home and their waiting dinner. Tsubaku Masa sat in council with the daimyo over the land of wind. The two were trying to come to an agreement over some disputes because of a breakdown in communication between the hidden village and the daimyo's court. Azuki Ajsama, I don't see why you say you need to continue to raise the level of your shinobi the daimyo said, looking over the reports in front of him. Your village is producing quite admirable shinobi, as was demonstrated in the most recent Chunin exams. Almost all of the participants from Sunagakur who made it to the finals were promoted. It is because we have the smallest population among the five great villages. We may have excellent quality shinobi, but sometimes we don't have the numbers to fulfill every mission request, unlike Kanoha, for example. I don't want cannon fodder, but I want to make it so we can fulfill every mission request, instead of having to send some of our requests to Kanoha Masa calmly explained. You do realize that half the reason that Kanoha has so many D rank missions is because the fire daimyo's wife's cat Tora keeps running away, the daimyo dryly remarked to the Kazakiage. I didn't know that Masa stated in disbelief. Trust me, it's true. You won't believe how many times he has complained about that cat. I admit, you are making a point. Have you found any leads about the identities of those six children you rescued around 10 years ago? Not yet, Masa admitted, what little evidence we have points to Kanoha as most likely being their birthplace. The next time the Chunin exams are hosted in Kanahagakur, we will bring them and hopefully find out some answers if they are ready for the exams, of course. I also hope that Kanoha has some seal masters that can help with Gara's seal. The daimyo nodded, that does sound like a good idea. Knowing their identities doesn't mean much if they can't survive the exams. So their first exams will be in Kanoha. What would you do if they are from Kanoha? They will be free to choose, and if they want to stay there, I will sign their release papers without complaining, but we will miss them. From what Gara has said, Kei's and Kiri are growing very close, and Kankuro won't stop complaining about Tamari and Cage flirting during practice. You took them in when you didn't have to the daimyo mused, that is what helped me to try to fix our communication problems. 
After I found out what you did to Gara and Karara, I didn't want to deal with you ever. It wasn't my choice, I was forced by my counselors Masa quietly said, remembering his wife and her sacrifice. And now I finally believe you the dime you replied, because of your actions with the Nameless Six. Have you been hearing the same rumors as me about Arachimaru of the Kanoha Sanan? About the new village he has founded, Atagakur. He has requested to meet with me, and to refuse such a request would be a great insult. Dread carefully, Kazuki Ajsama. Arachimaru is known for being very devious and two-faced. I remember hearing of his deeds during the Third Shinobi War. At least Namaka's Minato was a man of honor, despite the fact that if you were to meet him in battle, you were as good as dead. I never had the opportunity to meet the man, even though I wanted to after he took the Hokage's seat. I was very impressed with what I had heard of him. Masa. Looked over the papers scattered in between the two men, it appears that we have reached an understanding. Now, let's see what we can do to bring our goals to pass. After a very long day of meetings, Masa was grateful to return home, even if home was slightly chaotic. His three children had returned home before him, and were discussing their day of training and working with their respective teams. Tamari was cooking dinner while Kankuro and Gara played a game on the kitchen table. She normally cooks since none of the guys in the family couldn't boil water without burning it. How was your day, Atasan Tamari asked as she threw ingredients into a pot. Productive, but long. Daimyo and I have finally managed to fix our communication breakdown and reach an understanding about the future of Suna. At least that's the hard part. What did you accomplish today, Tamari? She was sucking face with Cage during training today Kankuro said. A kitchen knife landed dangerously close to his hand. Tamari Masa scolded his firstborn. I was not. Cage and I had the assignment of trapping and restraining Kankuro and Katsu-sensei. During the exercise, we had to sneak around to make sure our plan worked Tamari defended herself. You probably were hoping for the chance to make out with him. Who would believe that the firstborn of the Sabaku house is like a skinny boy years younger than her who doesn't even have a name Kankuro jeered. Tamari grabbed another knife, but both Masa and Gara acted first. Kankuro, apologize to your sister. Tamari, put the knife down Masa called out. Gara had used his sand to freeze his siblings in place. Kankuro, I thought you knew better than to insult someone while they are in a kitchen Gara deadpan. Yeah, too many sharp things within Tamari's reach Kankuro muttered. Where does the boy get it from? Oh, wait, my uncle had the same personality. Apologize to your sister before Gara decides to let you go. Ankuro gave Gara a glance, who simply gave a slight smirk in reply. I am sorry for my rudeness, sister. Damari snorted in disbelief, but backed down when her father looked her way. She placed the knife on the counter and replied, I accept. Just do not do it again. Satisfied that fratricide had been prevented, Masa turned to Gara. what did you do today? Aki-sensei had us working on our tojutsu and our endurance. Even though my sand protects me, it can be breached, so I need to work on it. We are scheduled for a patrol three days from now, and Baki-sensei wants to make sure that we are all prepared. Kaze and Kiri are now officially dating, and Rai has been chaperoning them. Baki-sensei says that no mushy stuff is allowed during training and missions. I agree with him. He encouraged us to find an area outside of Tai, Nin, that interests us and begin to train in it. Kiri wants to learn medical ninjutsu, Kaze has expressed interest in, and I am rather intrigued with Dot. Masa raised his eyebrows in surprise, why? I have a good defense with my sand, but I think that by adding training will increase my offensive capabilities. Currently, they mostly consist of crushing people. I want to be able to use it with more finesse, so it is easier for my team to capture and disable our opponents. That sounds reasonable and well thought out. It is a logical way to increase your skills Masa praised. I'm going to assume that Chiyosama will instruct Kaze in basics and Kiri in basic medical ninjutsu. Ara nodded, Baki-sensei has spoken about finding a medical ninja to tutor Kiri after she has mastered the basics from Chiyosama. Something about Chiyosama's responsibilities makes it hard for her to give Kiri an advanced education. Rai, Kaiko, and Iwa are focusing their studies a little more into jutsu and, but Rai and Kaiko regularly practice ninjutsu and on Iwa, so he can learn how to defend against them with his skills. That is a good idea. Even though Iwa can't use Nin and he will face them out on missions so he needs to know how to fight against them. If all of you keep progressing at this rate, you could easily be ready for the next Chunin exams Masam used, mind racing with the possibilities. Really Tamari asked, hiding the surprise and shock in her voice. The pot chose right then to boil over. Oh, snap. Once dinner was over with and cleaned up, Gara climbed out onto the balcony of his room to watch the night sky. The peace he gained from that helped fortify him from Shikaku's shrieks during the night. His friends and family gave him strength during the day, but while they slept, he gained strength this way. Baki had begun teaching him meditation, which was also helping him greatly. 
The next morning at team practice, they were having their usual throwing and dodging exercise. This was difficult for Gara, since his sand always protected him, but Baki insisted he work on it. Kiri was the best, being very flexible and agile, so she was able to make the smallest movements to get out of the way of the projectiles. Hayes had the most stamina and was easily able to aim, throw, and dodge without pausing. The day's exercise was going really well until Kays managed to get off a lucky shot and nail Baki in the thigh with a kunai. Oh, sand blast. I'm sorry, Baki sensei Kays yelled, grabbing Kiri's and Gara's attention. Kiri, can you help him? Her hands glowed as she performed a diagnostic. No, it's really close to his femoral artery, and I don't think I can pull it out and heal it in time. Kays, Gara, we need to get him to the hospital. Gara immediately used his sand to create a makeshift stretcher for their sensei, and they quickly made their way to the hospital. One of the on-call doctors nearly threw Gara out, but Baki yelled at him to not touch his students, or he would lose his hands. The entire team was promptly ushered into a treatment room where they waited about 10 minutes before a medic came in. The medic was female, with medium brown hair with gold streaks that hung to her waist and pale bluish-green eyes. She was petite and quick and deft with her movements. Hello, I am Akeru Asako. Would you three please leave so I can help your sensei? OK K said, and the three genin quickly obeyed the medic's orders. I'm surprised that Kiri didn't ask to stay Baki mused as Asako began cleaning the skin around the wound. Why would she want to the soft-spoken woman replied, her eyes focused on her task. She wants to study medical ninjutsu Baki replied. Isako had been in the same academy class as him, but right after she made Chunin, she had been apprenticed to one of the medics at the hospital, so he hadn't seen her in quite some time. I don't know much, and Chiyosama is too busy to teach her everything, so I need to find a tutor for her. Ouch. Isako just put the bloody kunai on a tray and quickly healed the deep wound. As she began wrapping his leg, she asked, she is one of the nameless children taken in by Chiyosama. The girl couldn't have a better teacher when it comes to poisons and antidotes, but if she needs to learn some of the more advanced skills, I would be willing to help. Let me know once she has the basics down, and I'll see what my schedule is like. She knows the diagnosis very well, and she has got a good handle of the mystic palm, according to Chiyosama. If you want to meet her, my team should still be here waiting for me Baki informed her. Asako nodded, you're all done, you'll just need to take it easy on that leg for about a week. You are lucky that your artery wasn't sliced open. I can't. We have a patrol scheduled for the day after tomorrow Baki protested. Too bad. It will have to be rescheduled due to medical reasons. I will inform the council so they can make the appropriate adjustments. Now Asako finished tying the bandage, how about you introduce me to your team? Baki got up gingerly on his leg and made his way to the waiting area where Gara, Kaze, and Kiri were waiting patiently for him. Kiri, Kaze, Gara, this is Asako, a medic ninja who works here Baki, formally introduced the medic. Is she your life partner, Baki Sensei Kays impudently asked. No, she is the medic who will tutor Kiri in advanced medical ninjutsu. I volunteer to do so Asako said, shaking the hands of the three genin. Your eyes are so pretty, Kiri. I've never seen anyone with eyes like yours before. Then you've never met my brother, Rai Kiri giggled, he has the same eyes as me. Do you have a dejutsu? Not that I know of Kiri replied, when do you want to start? Once I have talked with Chiyosama and she feels you have mastered the basics, I will then decide to start with the more advanced jutsus. Until then, I will instruct you in human anatomy and physiology. Okay. Is that alright with you, Baki-sensei? It is fine. Isako-san, Chiyosama, and I will have to work out a training schedule for you, Kiri. Because of my injury, you three will have the afternoon off. Don't waste it. Understood, Baki-sensei all three, Genin said as one. Okajama, what do you mean by forbidding the genin from participating in the Chunin exam Saratobi Asuma asked his father. Exactly what I said Saratobi hears in replied. But my students can use the opportunity to show off their flames of youth Mido guy protested. I have received a warning from the Yandain Kazakiage, Sabaku Masa. He recently had a meeting with Arachimaru which left him unsettled. According to him, Arachimaru indicated that he had planned some mischief during the Chunin exams and he tried to recruit Suna. The Kazakiage refused, stating that they didn't have any teams ready for the Chunin exams this time around. What does Rachimaru have planned Marino Ibiki demanded. I am not sure, but we must be careful. Don't let anyone outside of this room know, unless I approve it. The Kazakiage also hinted that Rachimaru is responsible for this new hidden village that we have been hearing about, a Togaker. Anko, already scheduled to be one of the proctors in the exams, asked, should we keep an eye on any Odogenin that may show up? Yes, but be subtle the Sandame paused and asked, where's Kakashi? Late again Air and Jonin offered. Uhi Kurinai spoke up, I think he might be at the hospital. 
Rin mentioned yesterday that she was starting to have some pretty regular contractions. She might have gone into labor. Her due date was three days ago. The Hokage sighed, Guy, Asuma, go find him and bring him here. I don't care if his baby is being born right now, we need his advice. You really want us to risk Rin's wrath Asuma asked. Yes. We have a possible major threat to the village going on here. She'll understand. Go they took off as the Sandane pulled a scroll out of his desk and handed it to Tenzo, an Anbu captain. This is a request for Jiraiya to get back here and bring Tsunade as well, if at all possible. Do you honestly think that Jiraiya will be able to persuade her to return Yamanaka and Moichi skeptically asked. That is why I am sending someone with Tenzo Taicho Sandane replied. I am temporarily deactivating Karasu's Anbu status, and she will accompany Tenzo. Karasu is possibly the only person who can persuade Tsunade to return. The Ashi spoke up, I will go get her. You are right. Tsunade doesn't know of the disappearance of Naruto and Hinata. Maybe if Itomi tells her of that, she might be able to convince her to come, back. The Hyuga clan head quickly left the room. A few minutes later, Guy and Asuma were back accompanied by Kakashi. The normally laid-back Jonin had obviously had a very bad day. He was wearing a black shirt and his vest over his pajama pants, and still wearing his mask, his shoes were on the wrong feet, and he was missing. The Sandane chuckled, recognizing the signs. What time did Rin need to go to the hospital? Duom Kakashi replied, collapsing into a seat. What do you need me here for? Apparently a new village called Atagakur led by Arachimaru is planning on causing some trouble for us during the Chunin exams Genma informed him. If we play this smart, we might be able to set a trap for them. If Yureya and Tsunade do return, we'll have to keep it quiet. Does anyone have any suggestions? A snore from Kakashi was the first reply. Tsuritobi just gave him an understanding look and began forming a plan of action with the advice from his top shinobi and clan heads. Kakashi slept during the entire meeting. Once the meeting had ended and everyone was dismissed, a medic entered the office, pardon me, Hokage-sama. I was sent to retrieve haddock -san. He needs to be at the hospital. His son has made his appearance Saratobi asked with a smile. The medic nodded, yes, and he is perfectly healthy. Narita-san requested that I go get her husband so he can meet his child. The medic gave a small laugh. My son Kabuto is hoping to talk with her. He has begun imitating her use of chakra scalpels with her tojutsu. If she didn't have a baby, I would ask her to apprentice him. Hopefully he will finally make Chunin this time around. It's only his seventh attempt at the exams. That set off a warning bell to Siratobi. Yakushi Yashi has inadvertently hinted that his adopted son had greater skills than most believed. Is he purposely failing the Chunin exams? We need to keep an eye on this Kabuto. I will bring Haddock sent to the hospital. Thank you for all that you have done. The medic left the office, and Siratobi undertook the task of trying to wake Kakashi up. That took a while. Kakashi, do you want Rin mad at you? Why would she be the copy Nin mumbled? Because she just gave birth to your son and here you are in my office taking a nap. But that woke him up. The Sandane Hokage and the copy cat ninja made it to the maternity ward of the hospital in record time. Rin was almost asleep, a small bundle of blankets nestled in the crook of her arm. Hello. Sandane Sama she whispered, trying not to wake her baby, what was so important that you made my husband miss his son's birth? A major threat to the village, but I'll let you know the details later. So, what are you going to name him? We had three choices, Abito, Seiji, the name of Rin's father, or my father's name, Sakumo Kakashi said as Rin gently placed the baby in his father's arms. I think he looks more like an Abito Rin replied as Kakashi showed the baby to the Hokage. His face was still red and squashed looking from birth, and he had a shock of brown hair that seemed to be standing up. Kakashi was staring at the boy with both eyes, tears flowing freely from the Sharingan eye of Ichiha Abito. Congratulations, both of you Sandame said. I'd better get back to work so young Abito can grow up in a safe place. Do either of you know how on earth your sensei managed to keep on top of the paperwork? Number 1, the civilian council respected him, so they didn't give him as much trouble as they do you. Number 2 was that he used cage bushes to help him with it Rin replied, while trying to hold back her giggles. He told me that when I asked him how he was able to go with Kashina to every appointment when she was pregnant with Naruto, assign missions, and still get all of his work done. I wish I had known that several years ago Suratobi muttered, I'd better go back to work. Congratulations again. As the Sandane got to work with the help of three cage bushes, he reread the note the Yandane Kazakiyaj had sent. Despite some nasty rumors circulating about the death of his wife, the man was honorable. He would not betray an ally unless they had also done something to betray him and his village. I hope that Jureya, Tenzo, and Hitomi will be able to persuade Tsune to return to Konoha. I know that just Jureya or myself cannot defeat Orochimaru on our own, but if the three of us work together, I know we can. Hitomi will hopefully remind Tsune that she hasn't lost anyone important in her life. 
and when she tells her of the loss of Hinata, Tsunade will also be reminded that she isn't the only one who has ever known the pain of losing a loved one. The knock on his door interrupted his musings. It was a messenger holding a scroll marked as coming from a Megaker. Hmm, the rebellion led by Jiraiya's three students was successful. It is nice to see that peace was brought to their homeland. What is it Yahiko wants from me? Jiraiya Sama Tenzo Taicho said, How sure are you that this is where Tsunade Sama is currently residing? Jiraiya stuck out his chest, indignantly replying, Do you have so little faith in my abilities? Have I ever led us wrong? Do you want me to get started? Hi Uga Hitomi replied, wearing her Anbu gear and Tanto. I remember several stories I was told by your students and your teammates. She was also wearing her Anbu mask to hide the fact she had a dot. Jiraiya just groaned. I understand why she had to come with me, but that does not mean I have to like it. There is a big poker tournament going on this week here, and knowing Tsunade's love of gambling, I doubt she'll miss it. Unless she has had a complete personality transplant, she'll be here Hitomi agreed, nodding. The first place they stopped to eat in town was a bar, and they ended up causing quite a stir. The reason was because Hitomi and Tenzo were in full Anbu attire, which wasn't commonly seen. Hitomi had made quite a reputation for herself during the Third Shinobi War, especially because of that fight she had with the current Kazakiage, in which he was nearly killed by her and her partner Kitsune, Yuzumaki Kashina, not to mention Jiraiya and his reputation. A few minutes after the crowd had dispersed, Hitomi's sharp eyes saw a familiar blonde woman sitting at a booth in the back with another familiar young black-haired woman. The Hayuga Anbu and mother made her way to them. Her old sensei's cheeks were a bit pink, showing that she had already consumed quite a bit of sake. Tsunade glared at her, oh, did they finally reissue the Karasu mask and codename? I heard that they had retired the codenames Kitsune and Karasu. Or was Saratobi sensei foolish enough to reactivate the wife of the Hyuga clan head? Tsunade Jiraiya called out, it is so good to see you again. Jiraiya, what are you doing here, and with two Anbu on top of that? Sensei finally got tired of your peeping habits, and have you been arrested? No, they bring a message to you from Saratobi sensei I just came along for the ride and to see my old teammate again. Karasu, will you do the honors? Hitomi handed the scroll to Tsunade, who opened it and read it before tossing it away with a derisive snort. He knows me better than that. I am never going back to that place. There is nothing left for me in Konoha. You're wrong, Tsunade sensei Hitomi spoke up for the first time to her sensei as she removed her Anbu mask. Her pale eyes were like ice, and her face appeared to be carved from stone. Yes, you lost your brother, your fiancé, and a student. I know all of that, but I also know you haven't lost everyone important to you, and that there is still something left for you in Konoha. Shizun, Saratobi sama myself, heck, even Jureya-sama here. I have missed you, sensei. Please, come home. Tsunade locked eyes with her former student. Hitomi, it hurts too much. I can't face their ghosts. Whenever I am there, I keep expecting to see Dan come walking around a corner or Nawaki practicing at a training ground. I can't go through that, not anymore. Training you and Kashina helped keep the ghosts at bay, but now the Sanin paused and then blurted out, I don't want to see Kashina's ghost as well. What about me? Do you honestly think I don't know what pain is Hitomi shot back, her calm Hyuga exterior cracking into pieces? Kashina was my best friend, like the sister I never had. I lost her, my mother, and my father all on the same night. Three of the most important people in my life all died at the same time. But Hitomi paused and then continued, do you see me hiding from my pain? The my running from everything that reminds me of what I have lost tears began flowing from Hitomi's pale eyes. That is not all I have lost. I left behind my husband and family to find the woman who was like a second mother to me and was unafraid to give her all to defend the home she loved and not just because it was what her brother and fiancé would have done. Instead, I find a bitter, sake drenched old hag who could care less about the people who still, for some unfathomable reason, still want her in their lives. Hitomi turned her back on Tsunade, put her mask back on, and headed for the door. Tenzo Taicho, Jiraiya Sama, let's go home. This has been a total waste of our time. Tsunade, Shizun, Jiraiya, and Tenzo stared at the disappearing form of Karasu, stunned into silence by her words. Shizun was the first to find her voice. What was she referring to? You need to ask Karasu about that Tenzo replied. Tsunade was staring off into space, completely stunned by Hitomi's words and tone. Even worse, she knew that they were true and deserved it. She had seen Hitomi's face during the Enmas funeral after the Kayubi's attack. Hitomi had been seven months pregnant at the time and had to watch as both of her parents, best friend and best friend's husband were all buried. What else could she have lost since then Tsunade then looked at the scroll again. Can you all give me some time to think about this? Right now, I need to wring some answers out of a student of mine. Hitomi heard footsteps following her and immediately knew who they belonged to. 
Refusing to remove her mask, she turned around and spoke up quietly, I'm not going to apologize for what I said. I will never apologize for speaking the truth. I'm not here for an apology, Hitomi-chan Tsunade replied. What else have you lost? Hitomi turned away, not wanting to answer. Tsunade studied her former student, trying to figure out what was making her act like this. It was so out of character for Hitomi. The sake in her blood and brain wasn't making the task easier. Would you come home was Hitomi's eventual reply. I'll think about it. Sensei, I will tell you tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you when you are drunk or hungover. You'll get your answers when you are sober. The next afternoon, Hitomi found her former sensei sitting outside in a public garden. Tsunade's eyes were clear, and it was obvious the alcohol was out of her system. Hitomi began speaking, I was pregnant four times and gave birth to two healthy, beautiful daughters. The other two pregnancies ended in miscarriages. She took a deep breath. My firstborn is Hinata, and my second is Hanabi. Daughter voice began to tremble. However, only Hanabi is waiting back in Kanoha for me to come home. Where is Hinata? I would give everything to know where she is. Hitomi whispered, Hinata and Niji, Hizashi and Megumi's song, disappeared from within the walls of our clan compound the day after Hinata turned three. Four other children also disappeared from Kanoha that same day. One of them was Kashina and Minato's son, Naruto. Six children went missing all in the same day, including your Hinata and Kashina's Naruto Tsunade confirmed. Were they kidnapped? We believe so, but we don't have any proof. It was almost ten years ago, and we are no closer to answers than we were when it happened. Kakashi, Rin, and Hizashi spent two months undercover searching for them, but it was like they had vanished into thin air. We are still searching and won't give up until we find out what has happened to them. Tsunade wrapped her arm around her student's shoulders and gave her a gentle hug. I know I have been selfish and absorbed in my grief, so I am so proud that you didn't follow my bad example. Sensei, will you come home, please? Kanoha needs the slug salmon. I want Kanoha to still be there so I can keep Hanabi safe, and if we find Hinata, she has a home to return to. That night over dinner, Tsunade spoke up, Shizun, pack your bags, we are going home. We have some unfinished business there. What about your creditors? Maybe the godfather of my student's missing son will be willing to help us out, Tsunade replied, sending a glare Jiraiya's way. Since in all the times he's run into me during the past 10 years, he never bothered to tell me he was missing. I know he has more than enough money. Only if you'll go on a date with me when we return to Kanoha, Jiraiya said. Do you want to pay me for medical treatment instead, Tsunade threw back, I just need enough of a payment to get them off my back for a while. Saratobi sensei will probably have me running the hospital and then with a steady income, I can finish paying them off. I leave and pay you back. While the two san and bickered, Hitomi stifled her giggles while Shizun sighed and Tenzo looked confused. During a pause in the conversation, the Hayuga Anbu spoke up, Sensei, if you need accommodations when you return to Kanoha, I would be honored to have you stay with my family at the Hayuga compound. I am grateful for the offer, Hitomi Chan Tsunade replied. That way I can get to know your little firecracker. You have no idea how fitting the name Hanabi is for her. I have pictures of her and some of Kakashi and Rin's new baby. They have a baby now? Boy or girl Shizun asked. She was the same age as Kakashi and Rin and knew them well. The little boy named Abito Hitomi replied, pulling out the pictures. This is one of those strange things about women that we men will never understand Jureya murmured to Tenzo, who nodded in agreement.